Officer Salaveria, congratulations on behalf of the Senate and House members. Thank you, Chair. And um, perhaps uh, if you want to introduce all your um, division members who are here and present. Okay, that that would be a long a long list of individuals, but I will I will attempt. Okay, to so if it's part of it, then you can just okay. proceed. Okay. Good morning, Chairs Takuda, Chair Luke, members of the committee, Madam President. Thank you for the opportunity to testify on the Department of Business and Economic Developments and Tourism's 2016-2017 Executive Biennium Budget. Uh, you have the department's testimony in front of you, so with your indulgence, I will be brief and summarize to the salient points. I do have with me all of the division heads and uh, agency uh, directors that would be available to answer any specific questions that you have. The department's mission is to support the development and expansion of Hawaii's economy. We will do that by promoting and advancing innovation among all sectors so that our economy is globally competitive, dynamic, and productive. We believe that this will provide the opportunity and benefit for all of Hawaii's citizens. The department has focused its attention on sectors where investment and development potential is its, is its highest, such as energy and housing, and has promoted the growth of a vibrant innovation sector to further expand our economic scope. Innovation across all sectors of the economy has demonstrated economic growth and job creation. Our high quality of life is a competitive advantage in attracting the entrepreneurial and creative talent that is, a, is an essential factor to success in this area. The department's divisions and attached agencies are organized and aligned to support this mission through the High Growth Initiative. The High Growth Initiative implements programs and investments that support the establishment and growth of entrepreneurial companies with rapid growth potential. These firms also have the potential to form strong industry clusters that will give rise to globally relevant businesses. In addition, through its attached agencies, the department fosters planned community development, creating affordable workforce housing units in high quality living environments. Based on the most recent developments in the national and global economy, the performance of Hawaii's major industries, the labor market in the state, and the growth of personal income and tax revenues, the department expects Hawaii's economy will grow at a similar rate as the continental United States in 2015, at about 3%. The following are some highlights of Hawaii's current economic condition. During the first 10 months of 2014, the statewide unemployment rate averaged 4.4%. This was a decrease of 0.4% of from the same period last year. During the first 10 months of 2014, Hawaii's economy gained 1.2% or 7,480 non-agricultural wage and salary jobs compared to, compared to the same period in 2014. The state general fund tax revenues increased by 71.2 million or 1.2% during the first 11 months of 2014. Visitor arrivals by air increased by 87,255, or 1.3% during the first 10 months. Visitor expenditures totaled $12.2 billion, up 2.2% from the previous year. The total value of private building authorizations increased 503.4 million, or 22.4%, during the first 10 months of 2014. And through November 2014, the number of, of existing units sold on Oahu was down 0.9% for single-family homes and down 1.4% for condominiums compared to the same period last year. The median price for existing family homes on Oahu was $675,000, up 4.3% from the same period last year, and the median price for existing condominiums on Oahu was $350,000 up 6.1% from the same period. 
During the first 10 months of 2014, construction jobs decreased by 0.2% from the same period in 2013, 2014. Nominal personal income not adjusted for inflation increased $2.3 billion or 3.7% in the first half of 2014 compared to the same period in 2013. Hawaii has made progress in nurturing innovation in the innovation ecosystem. Co-working spaces opening up around the state, startup weekends, pitch events, investor summits, attracting entrepreneurs and investors from around the world. And a continuum of startup capital is available from accelerator programs to Hawaii-based investment funds providing pre-seed through Series A capital to Hawaii startups. Hawaii now has three venture accelerator programs operating in the software, renewable energy, and film and media sectors. Foreign Trade Zone, Nelha, and the High Tech Development Corporation have successfully garnered EDA funding for new collaboration facilities in the manufacturing, marine, and renewable and technology sectors and the creative sectors. And the Foreign Trade Zone, which opened in 2014, and Nelha in 2015, and HDDC in 2016. The Creative Industries Division successfully garnered matching EDA funding to support the entrepreneurial development programs, startup weekends, investor summits, export trade shows like the Tokyo Gift Fair, and the industry showcases like Honolulu Fashion Week are helping, Hawaii, high, helping Hawaii's high growth companies find new markets, customers, and investors. Five Hawaii-based investment funds providing investment capital for the formation stage through the growth stages of a company are now up and investing in Hawaii. Many of these efforts are being supported by the High Growth Initiative. The initiative has successfully partnered with the private sector and county governments to support entrepreneurial high growth companies. As highlighted in the beginning of my testimony, the department has organized its small business programs under the High Growth Banner to stimulate Hawaii's economy by focusing on sectors where investment and development potential is its highest and that promotes the growth of a vibrant innovation uh, economy. Recent reports commissioned by the Hawaii Business Roundtable and Enterprise Honolulu highlight the importance of supporting the continued growth in this sector if Hawaii is to create the economic growth and high wage jobs we need to ensure a bright future for our citizens. Innovation is the best opportunity to create a vibrant, sustainable economic future for Hawaii citizens and to provide an opportunity for Hawaii's young people to pursue a productive career here in Hawaii. In going to the department's budget preparation, priorities were based on those initiatives that best met the following objectives. And those were the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative, the creation of an innovation infrastructure, improving Hawaii's business environment, planning for dynamic communities, measuring economic change, and sustaining the visitor industry. So with that, Chair, I will go into uh, individual uh, program IDs. So the first, um, the first program ID uh, is Business Development and Support Division, BED 100. The mission of BS, BDSD promotes industry development and diversification in Hawaii by supporting existing and emerging industries. A couple of the notable highlights for 2014 include record participation of 55 companies at the Tokyo International Gift Show, representing the largest trade show delegation ever from Hawaii, and realizing $6.5 million in sales. 300 entrepreneurs participated in the biannual Hawaii Small Business Fairs, which are co-sponsored by the department, and Enterprise Zones supported 294 companies from diverse industries of which 87 companies took the GET exemption in 2013, 558 new jobs were created and maintained. The, the, the division's federal funding, the Small Business Administration um, Federal Trade Export Promotion, STEP grant, from which the Hawaii received a little over $1 million, is being discontinued. The department and the division will continue to seek other federal funds. Included in the department's request for the upcoming biennium is $250,000 each year in operating and promotional funds for the state of Hawaii offices in Taiwan and Beijing 
to further develop Education Hawaii USA centers situated within the offices. We are, there is also an elimination of the $1 million in federal ceilings due to the discontinuation of the grant. BED 103, the Land Use Commission. The Land Use Commission works with the state legislature, the county planning departments, interest groups, and landowners to define constitutionally mandated standards and criteria for the classification of land, assisting in planned growth, and protecting important agricultural lands in the state of Hawaii. The current economic condition has had a mixed impact on the number of petitions that are filed with the Land Use Commission. Recent events in the energy area have also played a large role in the types of petitions that are being filed with the Commission. Market pressures and affordability issues have resulted in a general decrease in the number of new petitions filed for development of single-family homes. And lending trends on the mainland have also resulted in less capital being available for the development of single-family homes. The desirability and profitability of utility scale renewable energy sources has also resulted in a change to the types of motions and petitions before the Commission. The Commission has processed two petitions and is in the middle of processing another petition to amend existing entitled projects to allow for larger scale solar projects on the island of Oahu. There are no federal funds that are involved or, uh, or implicated with this program and there are no uh, budget requests at this time for BED 103. BED 105 is Creative Industries, and its mission is to accelerate Hawaii's creative entrepreneurial capacity through strategic initiatives, investments, and infrastructure development, resulting in a thriving ecosystem which supports the growth of Hawaii's knowledge-based creative industry sectors. The current fiscal and economic conditions. While a small number of Hawaii's creative sectors outperform their national counterparts, the majority still need a professional development and infrastructure support in order to thrive. The division funds $175,000 for the Hawaii Film Office, of which $75,000 is dedicated to support r and at the studio, and $90,000 for the Arts and Culture Development Branch. There are very limited resources to support initiatives to empower the 48,000 individuals and small businesses in the creative and, in and innovative sector. While the division is resourceful in, fur in furthering its initiatives through partnerships, it is not an optimal scenario to grow Hawaii's creative sector and the infrastructure necessary for a thriving innovation-based economy. Some of the notable highlights for 2014 include uh, that the department just issued an annual creative sectors report in partnership with the Research and Economic Analysis Division from 2003 to the present, Hawaii's creative economy is comprised of 48,170 entrepreneurs in small businesses contributing approximately $3.4 billion to Hawaii's gross domestic product. And this represents 4.5% of the state's GDP. The US EDA did award Creative Industries Division $400,000 to expand its Creative Labs initiative in October of the 1,770 participants in the public program and the 48 projects which qualified for immediate immersive programs in 2013 and 2014, six projects include four Hawaii-centric micro-budget features and two television series and direct-to-web productions which are currently in various stages of pre-production or development. Estimated film, produ film production in calendar 2014 reached $220 million with an estimated economic impact to the state of $395 million. And the division forged partnerships with sister agencies, the Hawaii Strategic Development Corporation, uh, HTDC, and the Business Development Division to advance, Hawaii's to advance the high growth initiative in the creative tech sectors uh, and infrastructure development, which includes the Hawaii Creative Collaboration Centers, High c 3 and community-based co-working facilities providing creative media tools and micro studios for direct web production. On the federal fund side, the US EDA Economic Adjustment Assistant for, six, for FY15 and 16, again, the department did receive 400,000 uh, in US EDA funds. The program is not at risk of losing those funds, although they do not expect to extend for the full duration. And at the end of March, uh, we should be uh, extinguishing those funds. There is no executive budget request 
for the division at this time. Okay, Director um, Salaveria, before you proceed, if you can introduce the, the personnel associated with these divisions. I think um, I, we have a few new members, so it would be um, good for sure. them to... I'm sorry, I apologize. Yes, uh, with me here from the uh, Business uh, Development and Support <coughs> Division is, I have Milton. I think Dennis and uh, a couple of other individuals are away right now in Florida, I believe, at, a, uh, at the Surf Expo, uh, continuing to further uh, our continued uh, uh, advancement of Hawaii products there. The Land Use Commission, I see Dan. Dan is, is up there. And the creative divisions, I have uh, Georgia. Skinner and Donnie Dawson here from the Creative Industries Division. And, and David, I'm sorry. So I apologize. That, I, I will include them at, at, at every step. Uh, the next division is the Foreign Trade Zone. Uh, uh, David, David Sakink is the administrator for the Foreign Trade Zone. Uh, its mission uh, is to establish and maintain and administer the general purpose foreign trade zones and special purpose foreign trade subzones throughout the state. Uh, right now, with the current economic and fiscal conditions, uh, the foreign trade zone has, see has seen an increase in its utilization of its Pier 2 offices and warehouse spaces. The offices have remained at 100% occupancy with a waiting list, and the warehouse continues to operate at a very high capacity and usage level. With the recent facility expansion, FTZ has now additional resources to attract applicable companies to the program. And with additional companies participating in the program, this gives the foreign trade zone the ability to leverage opportunities to further international trade opportunities. Just a couple of the highlights. The foreign trade zone number nine completed, a major, completed its major expansion at the Pier 2 facility. This $10.5 million renovation repurposed a portion of the existing warehouse, which added 35,000 new additional square feet to cr and created additional office, co-working, incubation, and conference space uh, to Hawaii's hub of international trade. Activity across the foreign trade zone project in Hawaii last year was over $11.7 billion, uh, with non-oil refinery activity increasing 12.3% to nearly $3 billion. And the foreign trade zone number nine's Pier 2 facility activity was up 16% from the previous year. Exports from Hawaii's foreign trade zone over the last year exceeded $877 million, the 14th highest in the nation, according to the Foreign Trade Zone Board's annual report to Congress. Hawaii's foreign trade zone ranked uh, eighth highest in the nation for exports from warehouse and distribution activity. Excuse me. And employment from foreign trade zone activity statewide is approximately 1,974 1, individuals. The foreign trade zone received a competitive grant from the Economic Development Administration uh, of the U.S. Uh, Department of Commerce to help fund the construction of the International Trade Resource Center. That construction has been completed. Included for the division in the executive biennium uh, budget request are uh, are two CIP requests. The first one is $850,000 for, for an elevator replacement mm. and $1.3 million for facility improvements and rest for the restrooms, walkways, and office areas that, uh, that will meet uh, retrofitting requirements for ADA. The next division is the Hawaii Tourism Authority, BED 113. Uh, uh, with me is, I, I see, I think Mark, Mark, oh, there's, Mark is here uh, with us. Uh, as you are well aware, the previous executive director is now upstairs on the fifth floor. So uh, we will be working with, uh, uh, you know, with HTA going forward. Uh, the Hawaii Tourism Authority is the official agency uh, for tourism in the state of Hawaii. Uh, the HTA serves as a vital bridge between government and the tourism industry. Again, one of HTA's key roles is managing the promotion of Hawaii's brand and supporting programs that help deliver on that brand promise. HTA does not receive any federal funding, 
uh, and HTA's economic and fiscal conditions uh, will be uh, highlighted and discussed separately, I believe. And I'm sorry, well, with us here too is Ron Williams, the uh, current uh, uh, acting ED uh, of the Hawaii Tourism Authority. My apologies, Ron. We actually haven't really met officially yet, so I will right after this. <laughs> uh, the next division is the State Energy Office, uh, the Strategic Industries Division, BED 120. Uh, the administrator for that division is Mark Glick. and he has several members from his staff here too as well. The mission of the uh, Hawaii State Energy Office is to stimulate the deployment of clean energy infrastructure as a catalyst for economic growth, energy e ecosystem innovation, and investments. The division is funded primarily by the Energy Security Special Fund, which promotes a reliable, which provides a reliable and predictable funding base for carrying out Hawaii's energy agenda. However, the current allocation of funding from the fund, which is uh, 15, 15 cents of the one of the one, a dollar and five cents per barrel of petroleum project, does not fully support both the personnel and programmatic needs of the division. Federal funds have been provided uh, and are providing significant programmatic funding. Uh, and any change in the division's capability to secure federal funding could adversely impact its ability to perform its statutory and functional obligations. Some of the very uh, you know, notable highlights for 2014 uh, include the, uh, they oversaw the issuance of $150 million of bonds to support the Green Energy Market Securitization Program, otherwise known as GEMS and GEMS will provide low-cost capital to finance solar photovoltaic systems and other clean energy improvements for Hawaii's consumers who have had difficulty obtaining financing in the past. We began transitioning to the next phase of the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative, focusing on three key areas, which is reducing petroleum use in the, transporta in the transportation sector, achieving greater gains from energy efficiency, and modernizing Hawaii's electrical grids. And we filed comments with the Public Utilities Commission in three very high-profile dockets aimed at providing guidance to the, Hawaii, to the Hawaiian electric companies to aggressively pursue energy cost reductions and respond to the emerging renewable energy integration challenges. The division does have a portfolio of federal awards, including the U.S. Department of, Ener of Energy's State Energy Program Formula Award, and the division does not anticipate anticipate any loss to federal funds or impacts to the public. And there are no current requests in BED, BED 120's executive by any budget request. The next division is the Office of Aerospace Development, BED 128, and I have Jim Christofili here from that division. The Hawaii Office of Aerospace Development facilitates dialogue and coordination among Hawaii's government private and academic sectors, and overseas organizations, both public and private, to promote the growth of Hawaii's aerospace industry. Uh, the current economic and fiscal conditions, uh, as with most of our divisions, the uh, current restriction on operational funds has created uh, some hardships that include our, uh, the divisions or any division's ability uh, to hire staff uh, and to continue its, uh, its, its regular other current expenses operating budget. In, the, in this particular area, the current expenditure restriction has reduced support for operations at the Challenger Center and the Pacific International Space Center for Explorations. Both programs receive their fundings uh, through OAD and OAD's current budget restrictions does provide limited ability to reimburse uh, that division for their costs. Some of the notable highlights in OAD, OAD collaborated with the, Air, with the states Alaska and Oregon in successfully bidding to become one of six national FAA test sites for unmanned aerial systems that will help certify and safely integrate these systems into the national airspace, as well as provide local companies with opportunities to develop and market new, new UASs 
technologies in the global aerospace community. Pisces is leveraging Hawaii's moon, Mars, light terrain, uh, resident aerospace expertise and ties with NASA and other international space agencies and research centers to develop a research program that is testing advanced robotic renewable energy and other critical technologies essential to support future missions to space and the division obtained a space technology infrastructure management grant from the FAA to conduct the environmental assessment studies required to apply for commercial spaceport license for Hawaii and establish commercial spaceport operations at Kona International Airport that will enable space planes to launch and land in Hawaii and bring space tourism and commercial satellite deployment operations to Hawaii. There are no federal fund impacts in the division uh, and there is a trade-off transfer request of approximately $16,000 uh, within the division from other personal services to other current uh, to personal services from other current expenses to cover budgeted salaries uh, and higher than anticipated fringe benefit costs. The next division is the Research and Economic Analysis Division, otherwise known as REED, BED 130. Uh, with me here is uh, Dr. Eugene Tian, the state economist. Uh, it is the Research and Economic Analysis Division's uh, uh, mission to enhance and contribute to the economic development of Hawaii by providing data, analysis, and policy recommendations on economic issues. Uh, given the current fiscal and economic conditions, in 2014, one economist's position was eliminated from the program due to decreases in tax revenue. As a result, uh, the program does have a shortfall uh, in salaries and wages. In previous years, that shortfall was accommodated for by vacancies. A few of uh, Reed's notable highlights in 2014 include the production of 50 economic and statistical reports covering all aspects related to Hawaii's economy and the population. The department provided uh, the department it provided department-wide support, including database maintenance and analysis for the Energy Office analysis for the Creative Industries Division, and data analysis needs for other divisions and attached agencies. And it participated in the activities of the state revenue and general bond obligation and credit rating agencies and sales. And uh, they were very instrumental in our state's ability to be able to uh, get the type of interest rates that we were able to obtain in 2014. Hmm. Reed does not have any federal funding and there are no current requests in the executive biennium budget. The next uh, division is, is the new division within uh, the department. It's BED 138, and that's, Hawaii Green Infra and that's the Hawaii Green Infrastructure Authority. Uh, with me from the division is, I have Sid Miyashiro. She can stand, she doesn't want to stand, okay. <laughs> It is the mission of the Green Infrastructure Authority to provide loans for clean energy improvements in order to make clean energy technologies more affordable and accessible to Hawaii's consumers. The, the authority is a self-sustaining attached agency that was funded through the $150 million revenue bond that was issued by the department. A few of the highlights for 2014. In June of 2014, the GEMS program did apply to the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission for an order to approve the use of GEM, GEMS bond proceeds to fund solar photovoltaic and other related interconnect, interconnection technologies. An order was issued by the commission in September 2014, clearing the way for the program to finalize agreements with GEMS certified deployment partners such as lenders, solar developers, and local solar installers. Loan financing for solar PV systems will be made available to homeowners, renters, and nonprofits in the first quarter of 2015 and will continue until the end of 2016. The program is also continuing to look at other clean energy financing opportunities that will help Hawaii's consumers, such as community solar projects, energy efficiency projects, and technologies that incorporate a water energy nexus in accordance with the Public Utility Commission's order. 32318. The authority is currently not a recipient of any federal funds. 
There is a request in the biennium budget for a ceiling increase of $1 million, and that includes five FTEs and positions and funds for operational costs. The next division, DBED 142, uh, is the Office of the Director and the Administrative Services Office. I am here. With me is uh, Director Evans uh, and our ASO, our acting ASO, Stephen Sung. Again, the Office of the Director provides the overall direction and coordination of all of the statewide economic development and energy programs. It formulates and executes on economic development policies of the governor and the executive branch and economic development initiatives proposed and approved by the legislature. Again, due to the economic and fiscal conditions, positions were abolished and the hiring of staff have been delayed. Specifically, uh, over the course of the last several years, three accounting positions a personal management specialist uh, and a public information officer uh, were eliminated from the director's uh, and ASO office. Included within the director's office is the Small Business Regulatory Review Board, and its charge is, is to provide recommendations to state agencies and counties on new and amended administrative rules that impact small businesses. And likewise, the current economic and fiscal condition has resulted in budget constraints and limited personnel uh, have affected the board's operations. Some highlights of the board, uh, it did review 48 pre and post public hearing administrative rules and of these 46 were supported, one was opposed and one supported with recommendations. And the board is working with the state procurement office to implement a small business set aside program pursuant to chapter 103D section 901 through 906 of statutes whereby the board would participate in the creation and or implementation of this program. There are no federal funds within the directors and ASO's office and there is currently no budget request in the executive biennium budget. The next division is the High Technology Development Corporation, BED 143. Uh, with me today is the executive director, Robbie Melton. The High Technology Development Corporation is the leading state agency uh, that grows the technology industry sector with the objectives of diversifying the economy and creating high wage job opportunities for the people of this state. Uh, HTDC does operate under a highly leveraged model providing $8 of service to the state for every $1 of general funds received. Some of the notable highlights for 2014 include a $3 million EDA award to help the Entrepreneur Sandbox in Kaka'ako, and that's in partnership with Fisher Hawaii, uh, and the first major public-private partnership uh, in this particular area. HTDC did sign an MOU with USDA Agricultural Research Service to bring USDA tech to Hawaii. 23 companies, five of them new, received uh, Hawaii Small Business Innovation Research Awards Total awards was $520,000. Total SBIR Phase 1 funding was $2.7 million. 20 Innovate Hawaii Manufacturing Extension Partnership clients are responsible for approximately $10 million in internal investments, $40 million in revenue, and 52 new employees, and 105 jobs that were saved. Among these is Hawaiian Cool Water, which expanded to California and with the acquisition of the Los Angeles-based Water Cooler King, a water equipment business. For federal funds, the, uh, the High Tech Development Corporation does receive uh, federal funds. Uh, those federal funds are through the Department of Commerce and Natural, uh, National Institute Standards of Technology that do support manufacturing extension partnership programs. The program does require a $2 match for every federal dollar awarded. HTDC does rely on special funds from rent revenue and in-kind office space at the Manoa Innovation Center to meet that match requirement. If HTDC does lose this source of match, it will uh, be seriously impacted in its ability to garner federal funds. HTDC is the awardee 
of $3 million construction from the U.S. Department of Commerce Economic Development and, uh, Administration uh, for that future incubation center. HTDC uh, requires staff to manage, the HTDC will require staff to manage this project and the salaries of all of the staff are half special funded so the project is also uh, at risk. There were two executive budget adjustments included in the in the uh, submission and those are for a $67,000 trade-off request again moving to special funds from other current expenses to cover budgeted salaries and higher fringe benefit costs uh, and that in special funds as well as in federal funds the next division is the office of planning BED 144 with me is uh, the current acting uh, executive director Leo Sanchez the Office of Planning's mission is to guide the overall growth and development of the state through a statewide comprehensive planning framework. National, state, fiscal, and economic constraints do affect the office's ability to operate at full capacity, and it also impacts demand for land, coastal, and ocean uses, which in turn impacts our natural resources. OP is challenged by staff and resource constraints, but it is continues to work diligently to maintain its productivity and efficiency standards. Some of the notable highlights for 2014 include uh, a submission to the National Estu Estuarine Research Reserve Nomination Document for Heia to, to NOAA, and it obtained approval to begin the National Environmental Protection Act Document and Site Management Plan. It completed the U.S. Economic Development Administration's grant to develop a natural disaster economic recovery strategy for small businesses. And it is working in collaboration with the Office of Informa Information Management and Technology to modernize the state's uh, uh, statewide GIS system. The Hawaii Coastal Zone Management Program and the Economic Development Administration grants are administered by OP's uh, Special Plans Branch and they are subject to annual appropriations by Congress. The funding levels from, the, uh, from NOAA and from the U.S. Economic Development Administration, uh, respectively. The CZM program and EDA grants have not lost federal funds, and are currently there's no indication that these areas are at, risky, at risk of losing any of those funds. There is a uh, request in, within the executive budget we will be coming uh, to ask for a correction in a uh, error that was done during the budget preparation period, and that would be uh, to restore the federal funding that was eliminated from a planner four. Uh, there is a reduction of 8,804 in federal funds that are a result of personnel issues, and uh, within one area of the, the Office of State Planning, and another reduction of $118,000. Uh, again, resulting from personnel requirements. The next division is HSDC, Hawaii Strategic Development Corporation. With me here is Carl Fuchs, the Executive Director. And its mission is to support the development of an innovation of innovation in Hawaii through a return-driven investment program in partnership with private capital. Given the current economic and fiscal conditions, it is difficult for businesses in the innovation sector to raise startup capital and regions that are able to provide infrastructure to facilitate capital access for startups do have a competitive advantage in this area. In 2012, the division did launch the High Growth Initiative, the state's core initiative to grow Hawaii's innovation sector. Difficult conditions within the state's financial position have, preserved, have prevented the program from receiving continued support, and we are working with the administration and will be working with the legislature to find a more sustainable long-term uh, solution for that division. Some of the notable highlights for 2014 include uh, the division partnered with local entrepreneurs to establish two venture accelerators that enhance entrepreneurial capacity in the state and do create a stronger, higher quality of deal flow that can attract venture capital in the state of Hawaii. HSDC also supported events like the Investor Summit, Startup Weekends, and Pitch Events that build network density and inspire and prepare entrepreneurs to launch startups. 
and HSDC did co-invest with private investors to create a continuum of startup financing needs. Two of the pre-seed investment funds with angel investors to invest in Hawaii-based venture accelerator portfolio companies and a $10 million seed stage fund in partnership with private investors and a $20 million Series A fund in partnership with institutional investors. HSDC has received its full allocation of $13 million from the feds, uh, and that is currently being used as part of its uh, uh, program. There are no budget adjustments or requests for this division in the executive biennium budget. The next division is NELHA. And with me, I see, where's Greg? It's right here, Greg. Uh, the mission of NELHA is to support the development and diversification of Hawaii's economy by providing resources and facilities. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, the mission of the NELHA is to support the development and diversification of the economy by providing resources and facilities for energy and ocean related research, education, and commercial activities in an environmentally sound and culturally sensitive manner. The current worldwide focus and trend towards sustainability technologies has had a positive impact in the demand uh, for sites at the Hawaii Ocean Science and Technology Park, the host park. In particular, worldwide focus on clean energy has increased the interest in ocean technology and other forms of alternative energy, which will assist NELHA in attracting new business and research projects. A few of the notable highlights within this division, uh, there's over $60 million in new projects, a uh, new Monk Seal Hospital has been opened, a new charter school has opened, uh, construction on a new $4.7 million marine science and sustainable technology incubator building is underway. The OTEC facility is testing a new 100 kilowatt hour turbine. And there are three new clients, Hawaii Kai Corporation, Hawaii Kai Corporation Forever Oceans, and Aquion Energy. And we are in negotiations for four new additional tenants. During 2014, NELHA did not lose any federal funds. NELHA recently received $3 million in federal funds from the U.S. Economic Development Agency and $420,000 from the U.S. Department of Energy via the Natural Energy Renewable Energy Laboratory. There is a request in the biennium budget, and that is for $333,000 in CIP funds for the research campus. The next division is Hawaii Community Development Authority or BED 150. With me today is Tony Ching. The Hawaii Community Development Authority was established in 1996, 1976 uh, to revitalize underutilized communities by promoting and coordinating public and private sector community development. HCD, HCDA currently oversees three designated community development districts on Oahu, Kaka'ako, Kalailoa, and Heia. Some of the notable highlights for 2014 include, within Kaka'ako, current housing construction cycle will add 5,000 new housing units, of which 2,336 units, or 46%, are reserved for qualified income households. In Kalailoa, we completed an environmental assessment and archaeological inventory survey for the Kalailoa East Energy Corridor project that is now underway, and uh, that is now under Navy review. And in Heia, the nonprofit organization Kako'o Ovi'i continues to restore agricultural productivity on the 400 acres of wetlands within Heia. There are two CIP budget requests in the executive biennium budget $3.7 million over the biennium to pay for the wages and fringe benefit costs for permanent and non permanent project funded staff positions for all of HCDA's community development districts and $4 million of general reimbursable general obligation bonds to plan and design a parking structure in Kaka'akumakai. The next division, the last division, is the Hawaii Housing Finance and Development Corporation, otherwise known as HHFDC, and with me today is Craig Hirai, the Executive Director. The mission of HHFDC is to increase and preserve the supply of workforce and affordable housing statewide by providing leadership tools and resources to, faci to facilitate housing development. 
Given the current economic and fiscal constraints, the demand for housing far exceeds supply. And as such, housing prices are continuing to rise and the economy and real estate market, as the economy and the real estate market improves, which is putting a lot more demand on the services from HHFDC. A few of the very notable highlights from 2014 include uh, helping to add an additional 940 affordable housing units and assisting 400 families to purchase their first homes through the mortgage credit certificate program. The HHFDC does receive federal home funds uh, and we do not anticipate any cuts in that area. There is an executive biennium budget request adjustment for a federal fund ceiling increase for the federal home loan program of $100,000 and $200,000 in FY16 and 17, respectfully. That concludes all of the divisions within the Department of Business and Economic Development. Thank you, chairs and members, and we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, Some authority planning to do their own presentation at this point. I believe in the past they've had their own mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> hearing. Yeah. Oh no, we they follow you. Okay. You would, would you, can you come? I would be a rest of the statement, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions that the committee and chairs and Madam President would have. Members, any questions? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and good morning, Mr. Salaveria. Good morning. Thank you for your very comprehensive uh, report. I have several questions, if I may. Uh, first of all, as far as the mission statement of DBED, when was the last time that anyone reviewed that? Uh, the mission statement of DBED. Uh, is uh, I do not have the answer for you right now. The current mission statement is a, uh, a product of the previous administration. It is my, uh, my intention to take a look at where the mission is and where we are going forward and where the department can actually best support the business community. And uh, that is currently underway in conjunction with the governor's office. Okay, and you'll let us know if you make any changes or interpretation. Absolutely. Um, along with that, from a pragmatic standpoint, uh, we in the legislature love to attach agencies to DBED. Whenever there's no place to go, we say, let's put it in DBED. And in fact, we have that uh, added to the length of your presentation. Um, does it have any uh, downside, uh, downside to you and to the mission of DBED to have all of these other disparate agencies involved? It, it is. Why? There are 11 attached agencies to the department, and that's in addition to the six uh, standing divisions that exist. It does put pressure on the operational resources within the, within the director's office and with the administrative services office. Because the department's mission and, uh, and its statutory requirements are so broad, there is a nexus for, a lot of, for all of the attached agencies to be included in there. Uh, what we have essentially is a situation where our res we're struggling to appropriately administer all of those attached agencies given the resources that we have. So uh, are you asking for us to give you some more this year to help you out, or are you okay? Uh, in preparation of the budget, uh, the budget was created with a status quo uh, uh, provision. Mm -hmm. uh, it is our intention uh, to work uh, with the Office of the Governor. We are meeting with them on Friday to come up with a more comprehensive plan on what we want to do uh, for the department, and we will be coming down uh, via gover governor's message process. Uh, in many of the areas you pointed to uh, highlights from last year and uh, successes, targeted successes, um, yet two things. Uh, can we agree that uh, even though for the last four years we've been told that this economy has turned the corner, that for most individuals and most businesses, not some of the highlights that you had here, but for most people, it has gotten more costly and more difficult to live and to do business in Hawaii. Can we agree on that? Uh, an argument can be made that uh, 
that, yes, the cost of living is very high in the state of Hawaii. I think the Department of Business and Economic Development's focus, uh, in addition to focusing on, on actually driving uh, business activity to expand the economy, uh, we do have a very large charge to reduce uh, or to actually increase personal discretionary income, especially in the areas of housing and energy. And we believe that that really is one area where the department can do the most economic development support by creating more discretionary income within the people. And yet uh, the price of housing continues to escalate while the availability of housing does not keep pace. Um, our monopoly uh, electric company continues to uh, raise rates, charges, and fees on us. Uh, and uh, as you are aware, almost every national organization that independently uh, looks at the economic vitality and entrepreneurship of the states, almost every one of them, on what seems to be a weekly basis, ranks Hawaii as either the 49th or 50th worst state in the nation. Do you have any comments on that? No, I, I do not have any comments on that. Okay. Um, in the area, you raised the, the issue about the Small Business Regulatory Review Board. Yes. That's something that I've been involved with for a number of years. And I know that I talked to the people that are both on the board and uh, the small businesses are affected, and everybody has been uh, concerned and raised issues over the last several years that uh, really they don't get any respect. The funding aside, it, it's a question of they are treated as a stepchild, yet they have a very important position in the community and within small business. Now, I notice there's no um, a budget asks this year, but is there any administrative changes or anything that is going to be done uh, to make that uh, agency as important as the legislature wanted it to be? I am currently reviewing the operations of the uh, director's office and administrative services office uh, to find out what is the, the optimum configuration to in order to provide the small business regulatory review board as well as every other uh, division and agency uh, with under DBED's control. Uh, to be more efficient and, op and optimum. Uh, we do understand that there is constraints, overall constraints in the, in the financial picture. We are but one of uh, many divisions and departments and agencies. So we will continue to, uh, to plead our case for additional resources, but understanding that if we do not get them, the job still needs to be done and we will continue working with, uh, with, that di with every division, including the Small Business Regulatory Review Board. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Salaberry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. House members, any questions? Okay. Chair. Okay. Senator Lowen, I mean, Representative Lowen. Thanks. Um, I have a question for State Office of Energy. So, I mean, it's clear that you've um, accomplished a lot, but what does it really mean? for you know, citizens of the state of Hawaii? Are there any metrics to kind of quantify that? Well, I have uh, Mark Lick here, the administrator from the Energy Office, uh, to help answer that question, Representative, if that's okay. Uh, thank you, Representative Lowen. Uh, there's a couple of di different ways that we track uh, the progress of energy uh, programs. One way is uh, reporting this done by Hawaiian Electric and forecast done by the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute showing energy savings uh, that occur from meeting RPS. Uh, we track the renewable portfolio standard meeting that and we're ahead of schedule. We're ahead of schedule on the energy efficiency portfolio standard. And we look, also look at transportation goals and, uh, and revenues from construction expenditures and so on. And in terms of RPS, just one example, um, roughly $68 million at this 18% RPS level, uh, HECO reported uh, saving from the operations of their grid. Uh, at some point, we hope to see that passed on to uh, consumers. Uh, if, as we meet goals moving forward at 34%, HNEI has 
evaluated that um, roughly uh, $186 million of savings to operate the grid uh, will take place and 225 million when, when we get to 50 percent, which we believe is doable. So uh, that's one thing. And in the past, we've looked at construction expenditures, uh, often talked about numbers. We're currently at roughly 10 percent of all construction expenditures in the state are, are uh, uh, attributable to rooftop solar installations. And uh, at one point, that was as high as 28.5 percent in 2012. And if we can continue to work on getting interconnection, uh, that will rise again uh, to uh, those those points. Just one other quick question. What's the capacity of State Energy Office to get involved in um, what's happening with NextEra and ATI? Uh, we think we're well positioned to be able to uh, explain what the values of the state are and uh, and set certain conditions in a, in a merger or acquisition agreement. Uh, and we'll be working with our uh, consultants, and that's one of the main things that we do with our budget is to, uh, you know, develop regulatory uh, responses. And this will be a, you know, a, of the highest priority for us to work on uh, an appropriate response and conditions under which uh, it would be in the public interest for such a merger to uh, to occur. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, Senator Inouye, and then. Thank you, Chair. Um, my uh, comments and questions is for the HHFDC BD one sixty. The the plans are for planned developments for the years 2015 to 2019. Uh, approximately 5,617 units are planned, uh, and I understand it's in uh, with regards to rental housing. Um, any plan for neighbor islands? We are trying to work with the neighbor island counties. We, there's a monthly housing director meeting with the housing directors for all of the counties. Um, with respect to the big island, um, we have the uh, Riverside project coming online um, this year. Uh, but um, the, I'm not sure exactly what we have in the pipeline. I know. There, we have some concern about our Nani Opuna project, which is in danger of being cut off by the lava flow and trying to figure out what, um, how we're going to um, uh, deal with what we anticipate may be some dislocation, or there is some dislocation from Puna, Puna right now. Um, and um, uh, we're, we're uh, one of our, one of our interim directors on our board is Ed Tyra, the former county housing director. So, you know, we, we're consulting closely with him and trying to keep a tab on what's going on there and what possibilities we may have to work with the county on Big Island. Uh, there are some projects on Maui. There's a home project on Maui that are uh, in the pipeline. Uh, and uh, the uh, county of Kauai, uh, we have, we're working on an elderly uh, project at uh, Rice Camp and uh, Workforce uh, Affordable Rental Project out in Princeville. So, um, you know, we're, we're actively engaged with the other counties. Uh, we're, we're working with Kauai County on one of their planned developments to see if we can assist them on some of their infrastructure financing. I'm, I'm glad you're looking at other counties as well because I know you're concentrating on the TODs with regards to the real project, but just don't forget the neighbor islands as well. I also understand you're working with um, other agencies with regards to developments on public lands. Um, so is that similar to what you're talking about in Pahua? As we all know, most of the public state lands are on the Hawaii island. Yeah, we, well, we, we, need to, we need to get engaged more and see what, how we can be of mo most assistance in, in the Pahua area because uh, like I understand, the, uh, my understanding is the uh, rental market in Hilo is quite overheated right now. 
Uh, there's a real shortage. People are moving from Pune to Hilo, and uh, there's not a whole lot to rent, and the rents are going up. So, you know, I, I, well, well, sir, well, we'll circle around with the county and the county housing director uh, and try to keep in touch with them and, and see what we can do, um, and maybe also see what may, we can do about some uh, maybe temporary housing solutions. So are we looking at um, developing apartment buildings for rentals? As we know, you know, Hawaii Island um, has so much land and most of the developments with rentals, particularly in East Hawaii, are on, you know, are in single family dwellings. Um, you know, we don't have the luxury of Oahu where you have, you know, if, uh, apartment dwellings. And so the the buildings, uh, the future developments for Pahoa region or uh, the Puna area, are you looking at single family dwellings or apartments? Um, and I guess apartments are more affordable when it comes to rentals. Um, with, in the immediate future, we're seeing what we can do on Lanikila homes with the, well, see, actually we're trying to find out where, what the status of Lanikila, the redevelopment of Lanikila homes is with HPHA and whether there may be, say, some land available. That's the redevelopment, right, right uh, on Lanikila. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and whether there might, HPHA might have some land there, we can do some maybe low-income housing tax credit projects on. So, uh, you know, uh, part of that, as you know, part of the problem on the Big Island, too, in terms of permanent housing, maybe uh, water and sewer connections and things like that. So, um, that, but that site seems to be um, particularly interesting at this time under the circumstances because HPHA was already redeveloping it. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Representative Onishi and then Senator Chen. Yeah, um, I have a follow-up comment to what Senator Inouye was talking about in Pune. Um, one of the things that uh, I would like to ask your consideration is when you're looking at uh, the East Hawaii situation and especially the Pune area, is that right now there has been significant impact in the DOE system with the migration of families into other areas on East Hawaii and especially with the schools. So any kinds of considerations that you guys are looking at in terms of, you know, housing development or areas to look at, you know, uh, uh, encouraging people to, to uh, maybe explore. Um, also, if you could make sure that you contact the DOE because we're running into a situation where especially in the Keao area, the, the uh, KKP complex, where the schools are now overcrowded and there is no capacity for additional families to move, which may require additional busing of students from other districts into the Hilo complex. So. If you could keep that in mind and, and make sure you contact or, or work in conjunction with the DOE in regards to uh, if there are families migrating from Pune, you know, into East Hawaii. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Chenoklis. Thank you. I guess I'll start with Craig because he's up there. Um, I think most people know by now that we're quite a bit short in terms of housing. Uh, from the 2011 study, 50,000 new units are needed in the state. For HHFDC, with the change in and the restoration of the 50% of Bureau of Conveyance tax to the Rental Housing Trust Fund, um, could you first give a status update on what kind of monies are flowing into the trust fund and in order to start to meet some of the rental housing, uh, 19,000 units, I believe, is what we need, 80% of area median income and below, um, what is HHFDC's plans to try and address that? Um, we, I guess we, we will be looking to the uh, Office of the Governor for uh, some direction in, in terms of how we should proceed and what resources may be available in the future. I, I know the governor would like to um, do more affordable housing along the uh, rail line. 
uh, on state land, and uh, we are studying that um, intensively and working with the Office of Planning on that. Um, with respect to the conveyance tax receipts, um, we anticipate somewhere between 40 and 50 million uh, this fiscal year. And uh, we'll, we'll probably have a, a, a second round for the um, uh, rental housing trust fund. With the uh, presentation by Hawaii Public Housing Authority at a re recent legislative briefing, um, they've identified state parcels that they have current housing inventory on and with the permission the legislature gave to actually have mixed income on those properties. Um, is there a aggressive plan that HHFDC and HPHA may be working on to try and take advantage of the state-owned property and the permission to do mixed housing, mixed um, income housing? I, I don't. I, I think the mixed-use housing is not mixed that. Income mixed housing. income. Mixed income and uh, mixed income. Mi mixed use isn't so much of a problem. Mixed income. Uh, presents some issues in terms of um, defining which units can be financed with which sources. It, it, it's the, uh, the mixed finance part of the mixed income that creates something of a problem mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of how, how we structure the uh, development. Uh, with respect to um, uh, how we are addressing the um, TOD issue, we are working regularly with the city to try and prioritize and sequence the developments uh, along the line because of the av availability of water and sewer uh, and when they will be available. Okay. Um, all right. Thank yeah, you, Craig. No. Chair, I'll, I'll ask my other questions. Council members, questions? Senator, did you want to continue with your question? Okay, thank you. Um, with regards to the planner position in the Office of Planning, Leo, are you still here? <clears throat> I noticed that there is a planner six position requested or funding, but does that position, uh, is it intended that that position would be the coordinator of the transit-oriented development sites for the state agencies? Uh, no, the the position that you're talking about, the TOD planner, that is still within the in HHFDC. So I, the, I understand the, that there is one in HHFDC. At a recent briefing, you had asked that there be a planning position in your office, office of planning. So correct. is this the position or not? Uh, that is still under consideration. Um, the position that is in the budget that was. Ha uh, provided by the governor thus far. Um, that is a special plans branch, economic development uh, um, administration uh, grant uh, that that planner works on. Uh, what we wanted to do there is to move um, the salary for that person to general funds, which would open up more federal fund project money. Right now, right, we, we take off the salary off of the federal funds, which then allows us or prohibits us, kind of gives us a challenge on, you know, reducing the amount of project money. So we wanted one, uh, the error that um, Director Salaveria alluded to was there's an elimination on the federal fund side, but not the addition on the general fund side, right, in the budget. So what's right now, what we want to do is retain the federal funding until we can make sure we have the general funding and then eliminate the federal funding. Is it your intent to ask for a new planning position with the governor? We have that on the list. Okay, thank you very much. And that is for TOD coordination? Correct. Thank you. Um, a question for the foreign trade zone. I hope the third year is the charm in terms of capital improvement requests for the elevator and the 1.3 million for facility and restroom um, expenses. Can you let me know what is the wait list currently that was mentioned in the 
in uh, Lewis's testimony. I'm sorry, I'm having a difficult time hearing you. What was the question in terms of the um, renovation? Uh, I just said I hope the third year is a charm in terms of funding it. Um, but I did want to know, there was a mention in Lewis's testimony about a wait list. So I'd right. like to know what that wait list is um, and how that potentially, if addressed, could impact the economic um, well-being of our state. Right. Uh, there's a wait list of tenants who'd like to move into our facility. Uh, with the opening of our new facility, our uh, International Trade Resource Center, that gives us the opportunity to now go to these people who are on the wait list and offer them positions either in the old section now or in the new section of our facility. So how many, I'm not familiar with the wait list, so if you can describe it, there and what just, kind of impact that would have potentially on our, our economy. Okay, the wait lists are companies that would like to participate in our program. So they are ones that would like to get office space at our facility but due to our facility being at 100% capacity with our old or existing offices, uh, they haven't been able to become part of that. So we're um, in the process now of uh, going back to those tenants who would uh, like to be part of our program and offering them space now that we do have additional space with the recently uh, renovated and completed uh, construction project. Um, in terms of impact, uh, we see a, a large impact. I actually impact. asked Good. how many how many um, there are were, on the I wait believe, list? twelve to fifteen companies. Oh, okay. And I see that as a as a large impact for those companies to be able to come on board and be able to participate in our program. What is? Have you quantified that economic impact? I have not. Okay. Thank you. Um, with regards to HCDA, Tony. One of the two CIP requests that you made was for a parking structure on the Makai side of um, Kaka'ako. I'm not sure how, how well we are following the Lay of Green proposal that was a part of the vision of HCDA back in the 1976 time period. Um, but what does this parking structure do and my understanding of what, uh, what little understanding I have is that impedes the whole um, lay of green concept in that area. So I need to understand what this structure is for. The location of this parking structure does, and it's not located um, anywhere close to parklands, which would be the lay of green, which was envisioned. This parking structure, however, has the um, lofty um, ambition to support the tech campus that would be developed at the six acres, which is directly EVA of the School of Medicine and the Cancer Center. So, um, Director Salaveria mentioned um, the uh, award of $3 million by the Economic Development Administration for our Entrepreneur's Sandbox, um, and it's envisioned to be at the, this Makai parcel in conjunction and facilitating and uh, actually bearing part of the cost, development cost of that sandbox, are two uh, lead tenants, one of which is Data House, and the other is Fisher Hawaii, to produce that tech campus opportunity at that lot C. It's part of a phase uh, plan to achieve that uh, tech campus, and the parking structure is uh, expected to support those activities directly as well as area or Makai area activities in general. What are the streets that would um, be the boundaries for this new parking structure? It would be located within the six acre parcel which is bounded by Ilalo on the Malka side, Keave on the Diamond Head side, and it's uh, actually the piers one and two on the Eva side. So there is no um, proximity or location of this lot uh, within the park systems that we have in the Makai area. Okay, I'll get more detail later. Thank you. Okay, Senator Kim. Can I follow up with that, um, Tony? It appears that we are putting K 
campuses on our very prime oceanfront properties. I mean, we're seeing that with the Aloha Tower development. Um, I know we put the cancer center there. I wasn't necessarily in support of putting all of this, but this is prime beachfront, oceanfront properties. And was that going to be our policy to put campuses on those properties? Well, actually, um, as the Makai area has a prohibition of residential development, um, and we see this as a expansion of um, the ongoing activities and investment with the School of Medicine and the Cancer Center uh, in terms of encouraging tech development and associated tech development. Um, quite frankly, the, we feel that that might be the optimal use for this area as it, it has been long envisioned to be a part of a um, tech and learning uh, situation. I think that was not the intent when we put the cancer center there to turn that whole Makai area into campus. And yes, it's not residential, but this is prime ocean front and this is more commercial. If you put a campus and a tech any place in the middle of Oahu or near, they're going to draw people there. And that's going to help the, the residential, the community areas, but to put it on ocean front. I really don't understand why we were going to spend that kind of high real estate for campuses. And uh, you, just you folks really got to think this through. Um, I understand. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Keep okay, Senator Inoy. Thank you. Um, it's good to see you again. Um, just a refresher. Uh, during the Cayetano administration, and I cheered um, Waterland, and you were on board, um, I think in another position or maybe the same, but the plans at that time was looking at the garage structure on the Mauka side, uh, and I think there was an extensive um, report or they, he probably did an assessment already within the area for the parking structure when we looked at developing the, the uh, medical center and the cancer building. Um, am I correct in that during that time uh, earlier in the early 2000? Yes, Senator, you are correct in that. Uh, when the Cancer Center and School of Medicine were developed, um, they did not include in the development a uh, parking structure. Um, and so it had been long envisioned that a, at least a 600 stall uh, facility would need to be developed to support the ongoing uh, growth of that activity. And so our expectation is that um, currently Lot C provides uh, 400 at grade surface parking for to support um, Jabson and the Cancer Center. It's our expectation that a park, uh, parking structure can be more effectively utilized on a 24-7 basis to support park activities as well as the ongoing parking requirements for the School of Medicine and Cancer Center. In addition, the vision for this area had included the notion that um, tech development or a tech campus, as um, we described here, would also be developing um, in affiliation with the uh, School of Medicine and Cancer Center. Um, those plans have not been able to come to fruition. Um, and in this situation with the EDA grant, we look to see that uh, a stimulus for more uh, tech type development activities, such as at that entrepreneurial sandbox and thus the need for, or increased need, for parking facilities. Here. Um, during the time when we, we looked at the parking structure, again, going back to my comment, um, the city and county also was involved because some of the lands on the Malka side of, was that, Ala Moana, um, uh, included part of the city and county and the industrial area, and I think the consideration for the parking structure was twofold, either build a bigger structure, and I think city and county was also um, 
hopefully we would participate with the state. Um, but I also remember the vision of having a bridge over Alamoana for a walking path, I guess, to get to the parking structure. But um, so the plans um, at that time also included replacing the industrial parcels on the Mauka side. Um, all of that has changed now. So uh, land honing in the Mauka uh, portion of uh, or above Alamoana uh, Boulevard is largely concentrated in private hands. And so uh, while there has been discussions of uh, creating parking facilities that can serve as a park once type of situation for the retail and businesses in the Malka area, um, uh, we, that's a continual work in progress. Um, the only city uh, holdings of any substance is would be at Blaisdell, and they are in fact entertaining, as you described, the notion of uh, perhaps a, a multi-purpose um, center at Blaisdell, uh, combining entertainment, perhaps residential, as well as ongoing activities and parking in that particular area. So you're correct that uh, there has to be a coordination. Um, however, I believe because of the uh, barrier of the Alamoana Boulevard, that parking structures um, and uses should be, uh, would be necessarily located proximate to the activities in both the Makai and uh, Malka areas. Hence the need still for uh, parking facilities to support the ongoing activities in Makai. I, I do note that it's our proposal that um, this parking facility um, and where we seek uh, design funds for it would be paid for by reimbursable geo bonds because we believe that the tech activities that we produce um, at Lot C on this six acre um, parcel would be generate sufficient income uh, to support the development of a um, facility that will actually support, again, the park uses on a 24 by 7, as well as the commercial educational uh, requirements that exist. Okay. I actually have a follow-up, Tony. Um, you know, I think uh, you folks need to go out to where this location is because have you been to Kakako Makai near the John A. Byrne School of Law and the Cancer Center recently? Um, we go on a daily basis. Okay. Do you see what's going on? There is a severe homeless situation that we've sought to uh, manage as best as possible because we're outside of the sit lie law. And so on Olomehani Street, as well as on Ohe Street, um, in that particular area, there is a heavy concentration of perhaps 75 to 100 um, tents in that particular area. Um, so I take your point that certainly that's not conducive to tech development. However, I'll note for you that we have an ongoing um, discussion and expectation that the city and county coning branch unit, which currently administers and enforces the SITLI law, will be relocate their, um, their operations to the existing look lab, which is on Olomehane. And so it's our expectation that once they are headquartered there, that on a daily basis, they're gonna go buy those tents and they'll be obliged to enforce okay. um, so clear the, the point goals. is, um, the realities of that location, I mean, I think it's pretty clear to all of us because we hear from the students who attend the Johnny Byrne School of um, Medicine and we hear from the, um, the Children's Exploratory Center about um, the severe problem that's going on in the neighborhood. So until the city and county of Honolulu and the state figure out what to do with the homeless population there, it's not prudent for HCDA to start planning and spending taxpayer money on something until we resolve some of the issues that are in the neighborhood. The other thing is Johnny School of Medicine and Cancer Center, have you been in contact with them? Because they are in severe financial problem and it's questionable whether the legislature will continue to support their debt service because they're coming in with a substantial request. So if that's not the case, you know, the alternative may be to close one or move. 
So why will we provide without you folks, you understanding what the current financial situation of these two, two structures are, start planning. So my request to you is, uh, you know, HCDA, you know, continue to go on its own path and sometimes perhaps ignore the legislature's request. So I'm giving you a heads up right now. Stop what you're doing until you get a clear indication from the legislature on what we want to do with the John A. Burns School of Medicine, the Cancer Center, and what else is going on there. And so stop what you're doing. Understanding your point, um, uh, Chair Luke, uh, I'd note for you that we have coordinated with the University of Hawaii. There is no expectation that the university... No, you know, currently they're very delusional. So I would not rely on anything that they're telling you. You know, they continue to come to the legislature for a funding that they think they're going to get. They're very delusional. So I would say, you know, just be very clear. Don't do anything more until you get an indication from the legislature of what our plans are for the School of Medicine, Cancer Center, and until we get an idea of what to do with the homeless situation. You know, it's not an issue that's going to go away. And we cannot just say, we're going to put a parking structure. No one's going to the park now. So I don't know who's going to pay for parking there because there's nobody going to the park. Agreeing with you, um, Chair Luke, please know that we have no expectation the, um, the development of this campus is on a private enterprise partnership, so we do not expect the university to be participating at, at this site. Or you, right now. Don't do anything more. Duly noted. Good morning, Lewis. Good morning, Senate um, President. On the film, you mentioned um, <laughs> that the film marketing program has been reduced to one trade show per year and is unable to mount a significant marketing campaign to attract offshore film production. Um, I know, I'm not sure if you're aware, you should be, we talked about this, that we introduced a measure to move the film into uh, HTA where they do have marketing funds, where they do have the resources, and over the years we have seen money has been taken from film, positions have been taken from film, we've not seen an increase in film, doesn't appear that there is going to be, so what is our solution? Because I think that film is an integral part and an economic driver, uh, and unless we we go ahead and put our resources and do something. We can't keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Um, yes, I agree. Uh, you know, I have been working with Donnie on that particular issue uh, with regards to the the film industry. Uh, the the movement of uh, the film industry to HTA. I mean, we can take a look at it and entertain it. I do need to talk to Donnie a little bit more about it. But what we, what we have been in conversation about is the current paradigm of uh, our tax credit program and the marketing of it, uh, albeit effective, there are other ways that we can take a look at in creating a better business climate for these uh, productions uh, to come to the state of Hawaii. The intention being is to not to go off and, and fight for that one particular film production, but to create the queue of film production going forward by creating a, a an easier business climate for these guys to actually get to production. So I, I do have Donnie here with me if, if you would like a little bit more specifics around that, well, the marketing I, I issue. I think having spoken to Donnie in the past, I think she's on the same page. It's a matter of giving them the resources, giving them the funding and the mm -hmm. marketing monies so that they can go out and attract these and not go after one film. But, you know, we need to look at creative digital media and everything else that we have here so we can keep our, our young people home in Hawaii, but it's not going to happen with the kind of funding that we've had and the amount of people we've had in film. And every time there's a new administration, they take bodies away and put them someplace else. So something's got to be done so we can protect that from happening again. 
Uh, absolutely. I, I, I merely ask that to be given the opportunity to take a look at the, that division and to see what we can do to actually make the operations a lot more efficient. Again, working with the administration and the fifth floor in terms of where we want to take that area forward. Okay. I actually just follow up on that question, actually. Um, I know in the, the various tables we did not request this particular information, but what is the film tax credit currently at right now? I know that the 2013 estimated rebate numbers, I think, was at around $33 million. If I look at the last report to the legislature, probably a little too early to estimate for 2014, but do we have any kind of indication for what um, the impacts are right now? And I think even looking back at that old report, there was some recommendations that you were going to come in and request, I think, five more FTEs to support the office. I know that the department has been very conservative about asking for anything uh, in, in this budget presentation other than $250,000 um, for the foreign offices. But is there going to be, can we anticipate requests for additional staffing in this particular area? I know you said you're going to be taking that back to this administration, but there has been past uh, notes in annual reports to the legislature. So, um, you know, what can we anticipate from a budget impact perspective from the tax credit and any anticipated staffing requests that we can also anticipate? Thank you for the question, Chair Takuda, and also uh, Senator Kim for your concern about the film office. Uh, it is true that we are um, underfunded, understaffed, and uh, as I understand it, we are going to be, our, our new director is going to be talking with the administration to see if we might be able to uh, request uh, at least one additional position uh, to assist in the management of the tax credit. Um, uh, to date, we are estimating approximately the same in terms of um, tax credit outpay, uh, about $33 million. Um, and the uh, direct expenditures associated with film production for 2014 are approximately 220 million, uh, which uh, equates to about 300 and uh, just under 400 million in economic activity. Um, we had uh, or have in various stages of process about uh, 33 applicants uh, this past uh, calendar year for the tax credit. Um, Clearly, we could do more if we had the ability to um, market this credit um, on par with our competitors in Australia, New Zealand, Puerto Rico, other parts of the U.S. Um, that are doing extremely well uh, with their credit, but we've, we've not had the ability to do that. And I think, to your point, uh, Senator Kim, the... Um, um, the ongoing discussion about uh, a transfer of the film office to HTA um, really does underscore the, the need for the program because it has the, the most incredible um, opportunity to provide economic impact and uh, well-paying jobs to our community. Um, and it is about keeping that pipeline full. And we can't keep the pipeline full if we are not top of mind in a fiercely competitive climate globally. So that's the reality of the situation. Uh, we, we do have our um, 2014 report coming to you, um, Chair Takuda, uh, with all of the numbers and the breakdown uh, for the productions that are in various stages from this past year. Continue. Uh, just to finish that, uh, Donnie, uh, we all know that uh, the former director of HTA, Mike McCartney, now the chief of staff of the governor, certainly was instrumental in, in researching uh, the film office as well as other cities and that he really felt that it would work at HTA. And so hopefully with your discussions with the governor's office, um, we will see some movement. Thank you for that. Lewis, Lewis, I had a couple other questions. Um, as yes. far as the 11 attached agencies, yes. how much oversight is given to them by DBID? I, I work uh, you know, individually and with groups with every one of the attached agencies. The attached agencies attend uh, regular meetings uh, at the director's office. Uh, they are attached for administrative purposes. Uh, it is uh, my role as a director to ensure that uh, that uh, 
the administration's, uh, you know, uh, directives and policies are clearly communicated to each one of the attached okay. agencies. So it is your responsibility to make sure that the boards are following our statute as far as holdover, because I'm very, very concerned about recently with HSD HSDC um, having the idea that they can hold over until the end of one's term, um, or hold over to one's qual qualifying term, uh, when in essence they didn't know the law. Uh, their minutes is not being kept properly, and if they go to the quick review of Sunshine Law requirements for public meeting minutes, they will find that they're not in compliance. And, um, you know, f for the board members who are on the board now, uh, to not be following that, and for the executive director to not be following it, I find that very, very troublesome. And would hope that there'll be greater oversight, either by you or the AG, uh, on these boards. Understood. Okay. Finally, HTA. Yes, please. Thanks, Ron. Good morning. I Good morning, Madam President. We want to make sure you, you, you we know your voice, so we wanted you to Hello. <laughs> <laughs> A question. The report that HTA released regarding the illegal rentals of vacation units. I believe that's about 22,000 illegal units that your study revealed. What, what is the status of that and how are we, you folks planning to move forward and how closely are you working with the tax department in doing something about this? You know, this um, is income to the state that we're losing. Yeah, we, um, you know, we, we, we gave the report, however, um, we, will, we are still trying to work with different bodies to try to understand the report and understand um, where the roles and responsibilities fall to that report. Uh, I cannot tell you at this moment that we are actually working with a tax basis or working with anybody to actually try to see what the state might not be receiving. Um, at this moment in time, what we did was try to provide information on a segment that um, uh, just for clarity, just to find out how many, how many people, how, how much of a problem it is. Okay. My understanding, we're told that this is anywhere from approximately $60 million uh, loss in maybe GET and TAT. Uh, and possibly even more than that. So as we struggle to find monies, uh, we need to look at where we are missing out. And it seems as though you folks did the study. So I hope it doesn't get ignored and that we will you know, do something about this. And yeah, we have provided the report. So um, we will continue to follow up with the bodies who have the authority to be able to um, do that. How much are, did you folks spend on the study? Uh, Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand dollars. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll take the Department of Attorney General's next. Thank okay. you, okay. chairs, questions? members. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, the chair had a question. Okay, everybody, sit down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry, I was letting the president speak first. I'll try, at this point, I'll just make statements because I do know AG's office has a meeting at 1 o'clock. Okay. So um, I'll make more statements than questions. Um, sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> um, at this point, not to be caught off guard, um, Director, maybe, you know, part of it was just some questions as to whether or not. Um, the office was going to come in to seek an additional percentage of the barrel tax. I noted in your testimony that the statement was made that the 15 cents was not sufficient to fully support the programmatic needs of the state energy office. And so I know that right now we do have some requests of the barrel tax from IRF 
um, and probably others. And so that was just a general question. I guess at this point, most people want to eat lunch, but that is going to be, I think, a uh, policy question that the administration will have to ask itself as to whether or not energy will be coming in for an increased share of the dollar five cents, as well as Department of Health, as well as ag, potentially. Yeah. But I don't know if you have an answer to that right now. Sure, and, and, and I'll attempt to answer uh, that from a policy perspective. I think it's imperative for us to continue uh, to find a sustainable source of income for the state energy office, understanding that the barrel tax is a is a uh, diminishing return, uh, uh, a source of funding. Uh, right now, the state office, the state energy office, is able to uh, get by with a combination of the funding that they receive from the barrel tax, in addition to other other uh, sources such as federal funds but it's something that we're currently uh, uh, evaluating on a go-forward basis. So uh, I do not have any specifics for you right now, but we're talking. Okay. Um, and then I guess I would anticipate that based upon reading the various prioritized list of functions that you have, that while the requests were very conservative, um, we're going to be seeing additional governor's messages come down for, for funding requests whether it be for um, high growth and other types of initiatives. Um, that's kind of along the lines of questions I had as to what we can anticipate in terms of funding, because I do know that much of the funding that we have given in the past has run out. And so um, just trying to anticipate what kind of costs we're going to be coming up on. I do also note that in your testimony, I think there was a request from Creative Industries for $600,000 in support for Creative Labs for FY16 and 17. I don't know if this was federal funds or if this was for state funds, but if you read in your testimony, it states in here, CID is requesting an additional 600000 in funds to support Creative Labs to expand the program. Is that state funds or is that federal funds? It's in your federal funds section, so I don't know if that's required state funds. Thank you very much, Chair. Yes, it actually is to help carry us through FY16, so it's 200000 that we have been discussing with the new administration, and we'll leave it to our director to continue asking for that, but it is to complete the so match. It, it would be general funds. $200,000 additional general funds. In Correct. Of the FY16 okay. and four hundred for FY17. Okay. It was just confusing because on, on the bottom it says no other. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Um, and so okay. just along those lines too then if we could just get a breakdown from uh, the department director um, in terms of all of the potential requests that she might be um, sending down to us and I know that the film I asked about the film tax credit but I know you guys also administer the research I believe the research credit Hawaii tax credit for research activities as well. That's a small one, but I know that there's sometimes a disparity between what you folks survey at DBED and what uh, DOE tax um, collects at its collection. So any tax credits that you folks administer within your department, just so we have a good understanding of the impacts to the general fund, if you can send that in to us. Uh, looking at the last report to the legislature, there was a question as DBED, I think, had it down as $1.1 $1 .1 million impact. I think. Uh, Dole tax had it at around 386000 So if you can just send us a, a listing of all the tax credits under your jurisdiction, we'll I do. think that would be helpful. Um, and then finally, just one last question so everyone can go get lunch and we can go into the AG's office. Um, for HCDA, uh, when is the master plan for Kaka'ako Waterfront Parks going to be completed? Tony, I don't know when you have an estimated um, completion date for that. A uh, programmatic uh, EIS has been conducted. We expect that to be um, completed in approximately June of this year. Okay. And that uh, that would be the precursor to for a plan for the parks. So given that you're actively involved right now in coming up with this active use master plan for the, the park area for Kaka'ako, Makai, and in this particular area, wouldn't it not be prudent to kind of hold off on looking at this parking structure, essentially? Because isn't it kind of contiguous, I would think, or in that area? I mean, I'm a Kaneohe girl, so it's a little bit on the other side of the mountain range for me, but wouldn't you want to actually come up with this master plan for the, the park area and the users? I mean, you're actually soli actively soliciting feedback right now 
on your website for users in terms of what they'd like to see and what the impacts have been to park users as a result of some of the activities that have been going on right now. So, and you're doing an EIS. So would it not be prudent to actually kind of conduct, do your master plan process, go through that EIS process, and then determine as to whether or not the parking structure fits into that plan or how it best fits into that plan based upon the outcomes of the master plan process, I'm thinking? Certainly, we take your um, advice. Uh, however, the, um, the parking structure is not contiguous to the park. It's just intended to be a supplement to our expected increased needs for parking in the area with the development of the park. But it would be for park users? It would be on a 24-7 basis, on a managed basis. We expect to be able to allow and service park users as well as the um, the commercial enterprise and the uh, tech companies that would be there. Well, we can have a further discussion about this later, but I just think if you're actually doing a master plan process, which I think is good, and it's addressing many of the issues that were raised on this, this podium here today in terms of some of the um, impacts that have been felt by the community and that we've been trying to resolve, that it would be prudent to actually complete your process actively first and then um, seek out funding to do the, the parking phase that you're, you're looking at doing. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the Attorney General's office. Um, our